If we were doing a science experiment and we were trying to find, say, the resistivity of an object, the resistance per unit length, and that would be equal to the resistance times the cross-sectional area divided by the length. Now, if we wanted to find this value of P, we would need to take measurements of R, A, and L. And each one of those variables, as you can see, P equals a function of three variables. We could say that, that P, or wait, so yeah, P equals P of R, A, and L. So we have a function that takes in three variables. And since each one of these variables could possibly have a different uncertainty, then we need some way to account for this when we, when we get our final value of P. And so the way we do this is sort of like Pythagoras' theorem. You know, if, you know uh, Pythagoras' theorem was if we have A and B, and we're trying to find the length of the hypotenuse C, then it's just A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So to calculate the final absolute value of the uncertainty with P, we do something similar. And so we say that the the delta P, and by delta, I mean the absolute uncertainty, absolute uncertainty. So if we want to find the absolute value of the uncertainty of P, or the absolute uncertainty of P, what we do is we would square that, just like C squared, and we would go, we need to find the partial derivative of P with respect to the partial derivative of R times the uncertainty of R. We would square that and add that to the partial derivative of P with respect to our next variable. And our next variable would be A. So we would say the partial derivative of P with respect to the partial derivative of A times the uncertainty of A. And we would square that as well. So this is just like saying we're taking A squared plus B squared equals C squared, except in this case we have three variables instead of two. So then our last one would be L. So we would go the partial derivative of P with respect to the partial derivative of L will give us, when multiplied by the uncertainty of L, and that squared, and this function will return our absolute uncertainty of P. And so by the partial derivatives, that can seem a bit confusing, especially if you're only used to doing straightforward derivatives before. But partial derivatives are pretty straightforward. It just says that if we say have a function z equals say x squared plus xy plus y squared, then how would we find the derivative of z with of z with respect to x without y? You know, if if we don't know what the derivative of the variable y was, how would we find out, you know, what the derivative of z just with respect to x was? And so by taking a partial derivative, we say we want the partial derivative of z, and that's what the symbol means here. It just means partial derivative of z. But the partial derivative of x is equal to, and so what we do to y, since we're trying to get rid of it, well, in a way, what we do is we say we pretend, we pretend that y is a constant. Maybe why would we pretend it's a constant? Well, what is if if y squared was a constant, then the derivative of it would just be zero because the derivative of a constant is always zero. So for here, we would say that now what's the derivative of x squared? We would go two x plus, and now that y is a constant, x times a constant, the derivative of that is just going to be the constant. So we say plus y. And since y squared was a constant, or at least we were pretending it's a constant, then the derivative of that is just zero. So what we need to do here to calculate the derivative of, or sort of the absolute uncertainty of the resistivity, is we say, okay, we have three variables 
we're going to have to take the partial derivative of each one multiplied by the uncertainty of each one. Now, if we say, let's, I'll, I'll go through an example and use some real values, and we can calculate our absolute uncertainty. So, what we would do, if we say the, the, we would go let, so if R was our resistance, and that equaled, if R equals, say, 0 0.168 ohms, and let's say our length is 0 0.2 meters. Finally, our cross-sectional area, let's imagine that to be oh, um, probably 7.82 times 10 to the negative 7. Then, it's our cross-sectional area. Then we also need to know our uncertainties in these measurements. And we will represent those as delta R. So if delta R is our uncertainty of the resistance measurements, and that equals 0 0.078, and if our uncertainty in the length was 0 0.05 times 10 to the negative 2, and using the same units, so this is, this is in ohms and this would be in meters, and then the uncertainty in our cross-sectional area, delta A, is equal to 0 0.05 times 10 to the negative 3. So what happens here is we will assume that if we are taking, just as we took the derivative of x squared here, that if we take the derivative of x squared, then that will be, if we took, let's say, the derivative of r, then our derivative of r will be our uncertainty of r. Okay, so this might be a bit confusing, so I'll go through an example of what we would do here. Now, we need to find the values of the partial derivatives of each one of these variables, and that is pretty straightforward, since we know that p equals r times a divided by length, then what we do is we say p, or the partial derivative of p, with respect to the partial derivative of r, is equal to, now, it's just going to be the same thing as writing r times a over l. So this is, if we pretend that a and l are constants, then we're just taking the derivative of r. And that will mean that we will take a divided by L times the uncertainty of R. And that's our partial derivative of P with respect to R. It's just A over L times delta R. We can do the same thing with the other variables. If we wanted to find the partial derivative of P with respect to the partial derivative of length, then what we get is negative R times A times the uncertainty of the length divided by the length squared. Because this essentially counts, or comes down to a constant over a variable. And so if the derivative of one over x is one, or negative one over x squared, then that's what we get, negative r times a times the derivative of length divided by length squared. And so finally, the partial derivative of P with respect to the partial derivative of the cross-sectional area is just R over L, which we are holding as constants, or we're pretending that R and L are constants, times the derivative, oops, times delta, or the derivative of the area, which is the uncertainty of the area. And so, as you can see here now, we have no unknowns. We know what the partial derivative of each one of these variables is, and we can use our values of delta R, delta L, and delta A, and substitute that in. And now we have the ability to calculate our absolute uncertainty. So by substituting these values in, we can say that the absolute uncertainty of P squared 
is equal to, and we can take our partial derivative of p with respect to r, which is a over l times delta r. Now, since we're multiplying by delta r here as well, or the uncertainty of r, we could just write delta r squared. Now, we add that, and we're working on our partial derivative of p with respect to a, which we found to be this. So we just write r over l times delta a. And again, since we're multiplying it by delta a here, and then we're also going to be multiplying it by delta a here, we would just write delta a squared. Of course, we square this too. And the final one was the partial derivative of p with respect to l. So that became negative r times a times delta l divided by l squared. And again, since we're multiplying by delta l here, we would just write delta l squared. And we would square this whole thing. So we could just say that the absolute uncertainty of p squared is also equal to well, the absolute uncertainty of p is the same thing as adding, whoops, I do need these, hold on. If we took the square root of both sides, so that we would get the absolute uncertainty of p equals the square root of the partial derivative of each variable times the derivative of each variable, and you add them all up squared, and this is essentially the same thing we're doing with Pythagoras' theorem where it's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But since we have to pin each variable down individually, we have to add them up and do this for as many variables as we had. If we had a function, if say our function p was a, b, c, and d, and it took in four variables, we would have to add one more equation down here. And so this is how you calculate the propagation of uncertainty. It's a more complicated method than the uh, other types of estimates, but it gives you a better answer.